Welcome back to the shop guys. Um, this is the last video I'll be doing uh, as a series on the universal tool cutter grinder. Um, don't know what I'm going to do after this, but so this is just a kind of a quick little guy and a couple more of my accessories and um, closing items on it. So I think after everybody's seen this series, you kind of really are sensitized to what what the grinder is and what the difference is between the U2, U3, and Char's machine. So see you next time. I hope you enjoy. Okay, everybody saw this guy that I made for um, holding high-speed steel uh, blanks for making cutters for the uh, lathe. And so, I need another project. I decided to make this guy here. Another simple dovetail. Um, so you might ask, what is this for? Goes in the machine this way with the wheel here. And, I think it clamps it, holds it. I can angle it. I wrote on the bottom 14 degrees. And you just go in and does it sharpen them? Oh yeah real fast so came out nice the only problem is it heats up pretty far, uh, fast especially when the tip gets small so yeah you basically you know this one looked like I don't know somebody used it to shear a nail off it was terrible so got it really back to shape no problem and uh, there's a little bit then you just take it to the stone and hone it and is it sharp? Oh yeah, it's sharp. It just cuts it real easy. <laughs> so another great tool, because I have a lot of wood chisels here um, that I'm just going to bang right through and put them all back into good shape. So pretty quick little guy. Uh, just to hold these screws from the clamps for my 3018. <laughs> They're spare, so I'll just leave them on this thing. So, just another uh, little gadget I wanted to share. Well, rather than making more fixtures to make tools, I finally decided to actually make a tool here. So, um, where to start? Uh, I went out and bought some drill rod. You get a three foot section for like $3. <laughs> and cut it all up into little pieces here uh, i only brought out a couple of them but so i still have the long some long stuff left um so in it's i'm surprised i just learned here a couple of hours ago that this stuff comes in different hardnesses and i'm guessing this is pretty weak because i can hit this with a file and make a mark in it real easy in any case, doesn't bother me, but uh, turns out when you buy a quarter inch drill rod, it really is a quarter inch. And so I'm back to the same old problems. Well, since I was successful um, salvaging my little teeny grooving tool on uh, the, the tool grinder, I figured, well, let me make, um, try making a boring bar because when I first started this hobby years ago, making rings, it was a hard time to find something small enough to take out the center of the ring after I kind of made the thing out of a nickel or whatever. This one uh, was the only one I could find at the time. I didn't know about Criterion, but this was a Grizzly, and I am super glad I bought this thing because these inserts cut steel and aluminum like nobody's business and I did recommend this to somebody else quite a while ago and they bought it and they're they're thrilled with it too so later on I found the criterion but um, you can see there's just not that much depth at all to be able to bore anything out so I figured let me make um, a boring bar here Actually, I can't remember whether I was going to make a boring... Yeah, might have been a boring bar or a grooving tool, but uh, I think it was a boring bar. But I'm back to the same old problem. Um, first, this guy, I showed this before for taking material away, 
same old problem a quarter inch drill bit is not a quarter inch so this doesn't go in here uh, anything I want to do I can't hold this material so because uh, I'd love to make an adapter for this to a half inch hole so I can use this as a boring bar uh, the other problem was evidently my three-quarter 5c collet doesn't take three quarters because I had turned this to exactly 750 thou wouldn't go in but yet I take a gauge pin three-quarter gauge pin and it slides right in but you know, my gauge pins are all negatives so it's a couple of tenths under three-quarter so I think you can see here I just you know chuck this up and take a couple of thou off so it goes in but I want to redo this thing anyway rebuild it now I have the problem with this was drilled out with a quarter inch drill bit so that doesn't go in it so I forgot what I did I think I drilled it out turns out I, I was shocked measured a metric bit metric bits are exactly the size they say they are so I took one of the metric bits, and I think this is five thousandths bigger than a uh, quarter inch. Tried to drill it out, made kind of a mess of it, but again, I don't care. So now I've got, uh, this has got burrs on it, so and I've got something that kind of, I can hold this in the grinder and work with it. So what I did was, and there it is, I uh, put it in here, turned it, so I got rid of all the material here and then uh, whatever I did you know put it on the wheel this way grind this down now I'm not exactly half I'm 25 ish thou above half so that's that's one hard thing to do on this grinder is to figure out when you're on half so um, okay fine um, did that angled this front edge here and then did the relief on the back did just jam it in there and set it to height it cuts and grooves beautifully so I have a fantastic tool I did harden and temper it so yeah it's hard the file skates off of it but it will groove and it will bore so I have the ability now to make really long <laughs> boring bars if I want. Um, it's still a little bit crude because, of course, first one, it's a learning curve on what to do, but it's sharper than all get out. And I still have to figure out how to put that teeny little round on the tip. So that's done. And I just now ordered off of Amazon a 6.4 millimeter drill bit which is like the cheapest thing because if you go and get a reamer it, it costs a small fortune plus the shipping kills you if you go get a precision three-quarter drill bit it's cheaper but again the shipping kills you and it's really hard to find uh, a fairly inexpensive or cheap three-quarter precision drill bit so this will be the best uh, I can do either that or I just drill it out with the other uh, metric bit that I already have so now I will remake this guy uh, nice and clean when that bit comes in a couple of days I can make my adapter for a half inch so I can use these guys on either machine because you can see that you know dovetails out dovetails in so the adapter, because I do, I have that adapter already. Uh, let me get it here, put the mic down. Uh, there it is. Yeah, I had made an adapter quite a while ago, which is in this guy. That's a half inch hole, and that's a quarter inch um, adapter. And you can see how it is. It just goes in, and the screw goes right through and captures but again here we go you know a quarter inch it doesn't fit so I can't use this adapter and I don't want to wreck it drilling another hole through it so um, get that guy in there there he goes nice so that's where I am um, 
and this stuff was dirt cheap and I started to research what's the difference between tool steel and drill rod and so I've got more learning or research to do but in any case did successfully make one tool and now I know what I'm doing on it so the next one I'll make a lot longer and it'll be a lot cleaner too as I was putting things away, I remembered I forgot to mention. I said this guy is about 25 thousandths too high. So this is fine for a lathe, but you cannot put this in a boring head. And I'll explain why. On the lathe, you can adjust the height so that now the cutting edge is on rotational center and it cuts beautifully and it grooves beautifully. If you put it in a boring head, it's cutting 25 thousandths too high and you can't adjust it or do anything with it. So I'll um, probably start looking for a, a boring bar that fits my uh, inserts, the TCMTs, the aluminum ones that I like. And it would be nice if it's really long too, because if I ever decide to build another engine, you can't um, bore the cylinder out, because if your lathe is slightly off, you're gonna wind up with a, a funneled bore, and that's what happened before. Uh, making you know like my flame liquor and stuff because I didn't have any other way of making the cylinder other than on the lathe because um, the boring bars aren't that long so if I can find a really nice long boring bar that takes inserts the only way you're going to get a perfect bore is with a boring head because it doesn't matter if your head's tilted at all you're still going straight down It'll be slightly cocked, but who cares? You know, a piston and a piston rod can take care of that. Uh, the only time you'll have a problem is if your uh, the, uh, dovetails, when the gib, if it's doing this number as you go down, which I know my mill does by a thousandth or two, you're gonna wind up with a mess still, so, in the cylinder. So uh, if you're going to make a boring bar and you want to put it in a boring head, you need to be pretty much so on the money, half, you know, halfway or in the middle of the diameter. I did put this in a quarter chuck collet in the mill and tried to use it like a drill or reamer, total wreck. So uh, that was, yeah, that's why I was trying to make this guy because I wanted to avoid buying a reamer or whatever if I could make another one of these and then do a nice clean job. So uh, yeah, you can be a couple of thousands high or a couple of thousands too low and it'll still work in a boring head, but 25,000, no, it, it just, it doesn't cut. It makes a total mess. So I just wanted to point that out. Last item on this machine is this. Um, it originally had this little bitty handle here, and boy, it hurts trying to tighten it down. Um, because I was surprised they didn't even slit the entire bottom here. It's only cut, where is it end? Ends like right here. It's cut from there all the way up this side. I don't know why they didn't finish it. That would have been a lot easier. And yes, I know some people have taken this whole thing out and just finished cutting it, which would have worked, but I really don't want to take this thing apart like that. So made uh, a handle, works very nice. I can tighten it easily. I'm not killing my hand to do it. So um, 1144 screw I made in there and there's one set screw in the bottom here. I was gonna pin it, but then I figured if I have to move this handle so it's tight at a different position or something like that, I can easily move it around and readjust it. And then if it does get loose, then I'll wind up pinning it. So um, I did put a little hole in the screw back here, whatever. So the set screw does go into it. So it's gonna hang on to it. But uh, one whole piece of aluminum 
not too thrilled with it uh, how it came out or looks but it's functional and I can use it so that's that's that mm -hmm. 